This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Seagraph 2014. To my immediate left is Emmanuel Marquez, Senior Manager at AMD. Uh, welcome to the program, Emmanuel. Thank you. I'm pleased to meet you. Now, this is this is quite the site. I mean, you, AMD is doing this wonderful VR exhibit here at Seagraph 2014, uh, and yet I'm intrigued that you're showing this Sony Morpheus, which I think is unique. Yeah. In, a, in a PC gaming environment. Can you talk a little bit about what you have on display here? Yeah, so we basically take uh, one of our uh, CES experience, which was an amateur on the house too, and was presented in a dome, and like with audio specialization using a very specific AMD hardware. And we actually port it in a VR environment, and uh, this time we partnership actually with Sony. And uh, we make, it's a prototype obviously, but uh, we make like one of our first experience using uh, the Morpheus headset connected to a PC. So the rendering and the audio uh, is actually managed by AMD PC and we get all the input and feedback from the Morpheus headset. So this is what we are presenting here. Uh, one additional nice feature we did is that uh, Every player is connected, so we have six players actually play all together in the same VR world, which is pretty unique today. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about the, the demo itself, because it, it's gone through multiple iterations, multiple versions. Now, it, was it originally called Surround House? Remind me how it, remind me the, its history. It was in an orchestra, and it was called Surround House number two. And we refactor that actually for VR. We, it was a really good demo for that because it was already projected in a very immersive environment, environment which was made inside a dome. So like a very 360 experience for like 30 to 40 people in the same time. So it was a perfect fit actually uh, for VR, especially for audio specialization too. I mean, in, in, it's kind of telling of the times because when I originally saw Surround House at CES, I mean, it's not a small thing. It's like a giant it's dome. Big, yeah. I mean, I don't, it may take a day or two to put together. Even more, yeah. Or more, okay. And and then now you're here and you've and you've got this in a virtual reality, stereoscopic, 3D environment. Yeah. Uh, and I take it the setup time wasn't quite the same, am I correct? Yeah, it's way faster. So, so it's a good way to scale actually this demo for make something more personal, more usable at home and, and more user friendly actually. So you could imagine like a big theater's event that came to your, your uh, home actually. So that's basically what we achieved here. Now, uh, I'm also intrigued, and we brought up a little bit earlier, is that Sony Morpheus, to date at least, has been strictly limited to PlayStation 4. I mean, it hasn't been released yet. Uh, how did you manage to get it running on PC? Oh, well, what we do actually is, uh, as I explained, is that uh, AMD VR uh, PC is actually like generating all the 3D rendering graphics and audio spatiation. So it's the same demo as the CES one, but Factor Red 4, Morpheus, and then Sony is sending us all the information about the position of the helmet, where you're located in the space, but also we use Move for pointing. So we use this kind of, uh, of element to be able to point and to select and to raise up and down the volume. So, so people have like a little of gameplay, you know. So uh, the PC is basically connected to a PlayStation 4 server and that sends us all the information back and forth for us. So that's the way we did the prototype today. Obviously in the future the goal for AMD is to be able to support a large amount of VR device uh, and uh, be the VR platform for it. Now you touched on this a bit. This is a cooperative VR experience. It's not just me trying it out, there's other people involved. Correct, yeah. can, you de can you describe how the interaction works, what kind of interaction you get in this demo? Yeah, so uh, as there is a lot of audio in this demo, obviously, because the monsters are playing in an orchestra, so they make music for you. Uh, so what we did is a very single gameplay where you could select monster, you could raise up and down your volume of your monster and instrument. So the goal is to set up the best orchestra, basically, to replay the, in the best way uh, the piece of music, no? So what we thought is that why not put several conductors in the same room and they all together try to do uh, the same things. And it's actually pretty funny because it became a cacophony very fast, you know. It's a lot of music playing everywhere, people raise it in a different way, so people laugh at each other and, and you could also stall the player from other. So you could go and say, oh no, it's mine, and people want to try it and say, oh, he already take it. And then you could put someone playing music next to another player and they get like, they get like surprised by the sound that lands on them. And I think the, the audio part is very important because even in a game in the future for VR platforms, you will be really trained by audio, you know. If the audio is coming behind you, then you will be looking behind and you could, really could look behind because you are in a VR environment. So I think that's, that's part of the experience we wanted to provide because I think it's important too to be able to 
not only use the vision, but also use the audio to track you inside your VR experiences. Now, now to date, um, when I've seen different VR demos, it's usually a one-to-one -one relationship. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're getting this VR experience and you're the only person in that VR experience. And what we've discussed here is that there's more than one person sharing this experience. Yeah. How did you go about networking these VR experiences together? Oh. It's, it's very simple. We update position and, uh, and audio for everyone. So we have a server that drives six of our machine. Uh, but it's a very, if you look at the multiplayer games that people are able to play and buy today, it's very close to this kind of concept. It's just like we are in a very interesting and fun environment and it's a really gameplay, so it's a simple gameplay, so it, it works pretty straight out of the box. But I believe VR, it's very interesting if you could meet other people in a VR and play and experience the same thing as them. So we push for that, yeah. Now, something that intrigued me as well is, and, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do it, was to actually be able to stand up and, and, and walk around. Yes. Uh, I, I know uh, some vendors have been pushing a, a seated only position. How did you make it possible to, you know, to mosey about the room? Well, so what we did is that we give like a circle of moving inside the demo. So you could stand up and walk inside, go closer, to the different elements and, and check them. So we don't stand up everyone, to be honest, because it's very difficult to manage people walking because you don't know where you go. So, uh, but it's as you try it, I mean, it's very fun to be able to stand up and go closer and experience, then you really feel immersed. But it's also very difficult because you don't know where you go. So uh, I believe in a demo like that, uh, there need to be a lot of visual feedback to stop you going left or right or too far, you know, like visually or audio, like, oh, you are scary by something. You walk and then there is a cliff and you say, oh, I am probably not going to go there. So we could trick people actually to stay in the environment we want and you could safely move inside. Oh, that's very, very cool. You know, you're obviously a lot of people are going through this exhibit. I, I was very lucky to catch you before the full exhibit opened. Um, what's the response been like so far? Oh, it's very good. I'm really amazed. We have like a non-stop in queue for most of the time, and uh, it's 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 coming and coming. And the feedback is really good on the graphics. It's really well, I mean, perceived because the render is really pushing far, and the audio people enjoy it. And it's not like a the typical game is very soft and it's about music and it's, you know, it's relaxing. So people enjoy it. They laugh about it and they, they're all really surprised, actually. If I could, you know, AMD is in a really good position in that, you know, your graphics, your graphics yeah. chips are in the consoles. They're obviously in PC. You're involved in, obviously, in VR. Your AMD is getting its head around VR and what it means. Do, do you see... AMD supporting Morpheus in a PC format, like what we're seeing here, is there is there a future in that? Well, that's just a prototype, so it's a first try. But obviously for AMD, yes, we would like to support any kind of device of VR that are on the market and provide the best result and the best uh, experience with that based on our uh, hardware, yeah, for sure, yeah. Very intriguing, very intriguing. Well, thank you so much for joining us on MTBS. Um, this is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV, Seagraph 2014. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching. Thank you.